And this is Conspiracy Theories and Chill. Come on in. We're going to start in about a minute or so. I made you a short video on Skull and Bones. Then after that, I have a special guest, Clinton Gordon, who's going to be joining us to talk about unity and how to move forward with political differences. So come on in. And we'll start in just a little bit. Hey, Ram. And let me turn off the theme music. But, uh, I made a video for you on the Secret Society Skull and Bones. I know a lot of us are probably familiar, a lot of the regular viewers of this show are probably familiar with Skull and Bones. Maybe you'll learn something new, maybe you won't. But this is a shareable video to get out to people that they can easily check everything I say in the video um, and fact check it all. It's all real, it's all verifiable. And it's real easy to show somebody just an inside look at how satanic and luciferian the people that really are in control of our government and our world are and how they're intertwined with uh, secret societies but i'm going to start the video because the guest tonight is texting me and he's having some problems finding the show so i'm going to help him while you guys watch the video um this is a video i made for you this week on skull and bones so we'll hang out and talk after the video. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. A world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. Our world is completely controlled by an interconnected web of secret societies. And tonight we're going to take a look inside one of the most well-known and powerful of all secret societies, Skull and Bones. Located at Yale University, Skull and Bones was formed in 1832. Every year, only 15 new members are selected into this secret society. Candidates are chosen based on bloodlines and their own individual power and influence and ability to help the society. New members are put through a satanic initiation process inside their literal tomb on Yale's campus. The tomb was built in three stages beginning in 1856 and finishing in 1912. The building looks like a literal tomb and is covered in demonic and satanic artwork and sculptures. Most interesting, though, is that the members of Skull and Bones are said to be literal grave robbers who steal and store the skulls and bones of famous people. The most famous person's remains that they are said to possess is Native American hero Geronimo, whose remains are rumored to have been stolen by none other than Prescott Bush in 1917. The family of Geronimo even sued the Skull and Bones for the return of the remains, but the case ended up being dismissed because the law that they were citing only covered grave robberies after 1982. And as creepy as actual grave robbing is and the storage of human remains, wait until you see this leaked video of their satanic initiation ritual. The videotape provides a grainy glimpse into what appear to be the initiation rituals of a secret society that's been around since 1832 whose members have gone on to be leaders of Wall Street and the White House, the Senate and the Supreme Court. They're sort of trying to scare the initiates, make them, uh, you know, disorient them, frighten them. New York Observer investigative reporter Ron Rosenbaum accompanied a team of Yale students who shot these pictures nine days ago. Rosenbaum's curiosity about skull and bones was permanently piqued when, as a classmate of George W. Bush, he lived right next to the tomb the group's heavily fortified home. From their perch, Rosenbaum and his cohorts taped the tomb's courtyard. What they captured, they say, was initiates, known as neophytes, being forced to kiss a skull, then members performing a mock killing. It may look like your average fraternity nonsense, but Rosenbaum says it's not. 
even though it may seem silly to us, it seems to mean something to them. And you can't argue with su the success of Skull and Bone. True. Famous alums include Senators John Kerry and John Chafee, to name two. Cabinet Secretaries, such as Averill Harriman, and three Presidents, William Taft, George Bush, and George W. Bush, who's been reluctant to talk about Skull and Bones. Does it still exist? I mean, the thing is so secret, I'm not even sure it still exists. Another part of the Skull and Bones initiation is to make members lay naked in a coffin and masturbate while confessing their deepest, darkest sexual secrets while the other members watch on surrounding them. This is all to form a lifelong bond of brotherhood and loyalty among the members of Skull and Bones. They swear to help each other throughout life, placing each other in places of high power. For instance, in just their 187 years of existence, they've had only 2,800 members, but have acquired impressive statistics. Keep in mind that not all members of Skull and Bones are even known, and since 1982, no list has been published at all of Skull and Bones members. But just from what is known, we have three known Bonesmen as U.S. Presidents, William H. Taft, George H.W. Bush, and his son, George W. Bush. We have five Bonesmen that made it to the Supreme Court as Justices. We have the first chair of the Criminal Federal Reserve Bank was a known Bonesman. Dozens of U.S. Senators and Congressmen are also tied to Skull and Bones. Another fun Skull and Bones fact is that in the 2004 presidential election, we actually had two Bonesmen running against each other in the same race. John Kerry and George W. Bush were both members of Skull and Bones. This group literally has influence in all branches of government as well as hundreds of members in intelligence, media, and banking industries. That is a great deal of power for any one organization. And Skull and Bones is just one of the hundreds of known secret societies that make up the web of elite power that rules over us all. Think of what we don't know and have yet to discover about the Luciferian elite that lords over all of us. It's important to inform yourself and others about the truth about who really rules over our world. Secret societies are very real and powerful, and Skull and Bones is a good, researchable, and verifiable secret society with enormous power and influence. So share this video to spread the truth about Skull and Bones and the satanic elite. And thanks for watching Conspiracy Theories and Chill. We'll see you next time right here on Me on Things and Stuff. All right, that was the video from tonight. Um, what did I do? I made it bigger? No, there we go. All right, so let me bring me up. Welcome to Conspiracy Theories and Chill. I'm Sean. That was a video I made for you on Skull and Bones, a secret society. Um, anybody have any questions? Anybody here have any questions about Skull and Bones? Because that was a short video. It was only six minutes long. I There was a lot I left out that I could have included. So if you have any questions about Skull and Bones or maybe Prescott Bush. Prescott Bush was very into um, the early the early days of Skull and Bones, and was the one that was responsible for leading the group that robbed uh, Geronimo's grave and stole his his uh, remains. And the family of Geronimo even sued. I mentioned this in the video, but they sued Ger uh, the Skull and Bones for the return of Geronimo's remains because they tell it as a legend. The Skull and Bones tell it to their new members as a legend that Prescott did this and led this group to steal these bones. Apparently, they have a lot. They have a, a collection of bones. Geronimo just happens to be the most famous and the one that there was an actual lawsuit over. But it got thrown out because the, the law that they were citing, um, the, the Native American family of Geronimo, was a law that only covered burial robberies from after 1982 so since it was way back in 1917 it wasn't covered um, the 322 that is a, that is a number that is important to them um, there there is different ideas on what it actually means to them i didn't go into it because well numerology is very important to the Illuminati and to the people that are actually in control of our world and it's hidden everywhere. So it is used and that is part of, that's what it is, is numerology. 
it has to do with the 32nd level of Freemasonry and then the the actual number itself means something and then you break off it it, it has a lot of other meanings and uh, I wish I'd answered that a little bit better because the numerology is fascinating to me but I don't I, I didn't focus on it as much in the video and I guess in response to your question I didn't focus on it enough in my research I have to look it up because I know I've heard it and I know it but I can't remember it offhand exactly what the numbers mean Ram says uh, Prescott George's father was caught funding Hitler's army and tried a coup on America in 1933 the Bush family is evil to the core and you can trace it all the way back to Prescott it probably goes back further than Prescott but Prescott Bush was very evil and their whole fortune was built on uh, as Ram was saying basically war, well not basically literally war crimes they profited hugely off the hugely it's probably not even a word off the war of World War one and two um, the elites always profit off both sides in a war the, the the elite bankers and all those they fund both sides of every conflict they win no matter who wins you know it's like that famous quote goes I, I care not who uh, makes a country's laws as long as I control who like as long as I control the money I'm butchering it I'm paraphrasing but it's a Rockefeller quote they don't care it doesn't matter who the president is as long as they're in control of the money you know the Federal Reserve System is something that needs to be taken down before we get our country back. The Federal Reserve System is designed to sh shithole and tank our country. So that's a huge enemy. That's another subject we could get into for an hour or so. But I wanna kind of segue here. So if you'll forgive me, I'm gonna change courses and, and go back to my notes because uh, I don't wanna make our guests wait very long before I get to them. But tonight, I'm gonna to have a guest on, and uh, the reason I'm having him on is we agree on he's a truther. We agree on a lot of uh, the same issues. We It's funny, I've, I we met on Facebook, so I'm constantly liking things he's posting, but then when it comes to political beliefs, we are on opposite ends of the spectrum, and it those kind of things fascinate me. The, uh, beliefs and the way that it works and, and just belief systems in general and how they can be so similar and different at the same time and what we talk about a lot is how to unite through those differences like me and him are able to be friends him being a Trump supporter and me being a Bernie supporter I'm 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 against everything Trump stands for I completely stand against Trump as a person even and I support Bernie Sanders, but I'm not so close-minded that I can't be friends with somebody who has different opinions. Because, A, you're never going to learn anything like that. You're going to live in an echo chamber. And, B, you know, everyone has different opinions. Like, with our guest tonight, you're going to find, even if you don't agree, and you're not a Trump supporter like me, you're going to find that you agree with our guests on a lot of things. And that's what we're going to talk about at its core is how to move forward united um, with our political differences and the division and stuff. And uh, I have a little other treat. Remind me to get it back into it later. It is a theory that I came up with. It hit me, it hit me this afternoon like a ton of bricks. And I was like, oh, no, that would be awful. It's a theory about Bernie's campaign that would be terrible remind me later to get back to that but uh don't don't oh no because i like bernie I, i'm not close-minded as ram said earlier i don't have tds i'm not gonna i'm not gonna you know push to weird things and propaganda down your throat i don't watch the mainstream media for one i i take no part in the mainstream media i think the mainstream media is garbage so i'm not brainwashed i'm not gonna attack you it's, it's not like that. As you'll see when we get into the conversation, me and Clinton tonight, we I can have differences of opinion and still be, uh, still have a productive conversation. You will see. So, um, 
Lori says Bernie is a communist. Well, we'll address that. I'll wait till we get our guest on and we'll get back to that, Bernie being a communist. But uh, who is Q? I'm going to ask him about it. And if he doesn't know, if he's not, I actually don't know if our guest tonight is a Q follower, but we'll get into that too. So right now I'm going to get a hold of our guest on uh, Messenger. So I won't be able to see your comments at all um, for a minute. But uh, I'm going to get in touch with the guest right now and so we can get into it. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Or is... I can hear you on the on the live feed. Oh, okay. Get my well, there's like a 10 second delay on the live feed, so you might want to turn the sound down on the picture because you're only going to be looking at me anyway. And then turn the sound up on your phone so you'll hear both of us. Okay, I got it. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to bring up Facebook. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I'm going to bring up Facebook so that I can see people's comments while we're talking. Um, but briefly, I'm just going to introduce Clinton to everyone, to our guest today. Clinton is on to talk about unity, like I was saying a minute ago. I don't know if you were listening uh, to that, any of that, Clinton, but uh, he is a Trump supporter. A friend of mine on Facebook is how we actually met. But um, we agree on a lot of things, as you'll see. Um, I just thought I would interview him a little bit, get to know Clinton was my plan, and then get into a little bit of our political differences and then try to focus on how we move forward united with those differences, if we're not able to come together during the course of the conversation even. You see what I mean? Yes. So I hope that makes sense to the viewers too. The, it, you'll see you after we get to talking. But uh, yeah, Ram says, I swear he's a Trump supporter and just doesn't know it yet. Maybe, you know what I mean? Hey, sway me. I'm open to being swayed. You know what I mean? <laughs> if, if I was convinced, I'm not closed-minded. My beliefs aren't etched in stone. If I was shown, you know, I'd have to be shown good reason not to support Bernie and I'd have to be shown really good reason to support Trump. But my mind is capable of being changed. Do you feel like you could agree with that statement that if you were shown enough evidence that your mind could be changed? Yeah, definitely could be changed, man. I try to keep an open mind on everything so that way I can remain teachable. Exactly. That's a really good way to be because exactly what you said, if you want to learn, you have to keep your mind open because if you close off to certain things then you're, you're eliminating passive knowledge that you just won't go down, so you refuse to. And that's not helping you, and that's not helping you at all. No, absolutely not. But what I was gonna show is just that we agree on certain things. Like this is a conspiracy theory show. So I wanted to put a little bit of conspiracy theories into the show and just show that we agree on certain things and think in, those, in the same way on certain issues, just as a kind of example. So- Basically everything. Yeah. Everything, like almost like every post, every, uh, you know, everything we talk about on, on that we post on our Facebook pages, it's all, it's all relevant to what I relate with and what I see as truth or possible truth. Yeah, which is what blows me away so much when we disagree, because when we disagree, we disagree fiercely. We are on polar opposites on certain issues, but we agree on 98% of things. So I find that fascinating, and I thought we could try and get into that a little bit and then afterwards figure out how to unite moving forward because what you're seeing in France is kind of what you're going to need to do. 
right. in the end. We can try doing it through voting. I would, I would like to see that happen because I think that's really the route, only route we'll take. But through voting is going to be hard. If I believe we'd rise up, I'd be pushing for that. Exactly. That's that's kind of where I'm at with the whole thing because, like, before I even started to support Trump, I was like anti uh, Republican, anti Democrat. I was basically registered as a independent. And um, you know, the thing that got me my eye open to Trump was that here I'm watching one man be basically crucified by both sides. So that 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 made me think like, hey, wait a minute, if if the Democrats are against Trump and even the own Republicans are against Trump, then this is the guy that I want to be with because I'm against both these parties. I can see that logic, but but let me ask you this. Do you really think Fox is against Trump? Well, they, they're kind of wishy-washy, really. I don't. I haven't really watched much Fox. You know, I don't like like you said earlier about the mainstream media. I'm really I'm really kind of open to the fact that you know the mainstream media is all just a tool to get people to feel a certain way, to spark emotions. It is. To it's it's all it, it's tell lie vision. You know what I mean? It's it tell is. lies in vision. It's TV programming. TV programming. Program. It's called programming for a reason. Exactly. Yeah. No, absolutely. But I think that the media is coordinated. The mainstream, as far as the mainstream media goes, I think it's coordinated and all you're really getting is a different version of the official narrative. So, so if you look at Trump's media coverage during the election, all the way back through the primaries, it was, it was enormously in Trump's favor on every channel. And there's no such thing as bad publicity. Right, right. You're absolutely right. Every bit of it helped him. So the entire media establishment, even the part that's ranting and raving that they hate Donald Trump, is responsible for building Donald Trump up and, and elevating him as a candidate. Right. I can, I can definitely I can see that point of view. But I, for me, it was always negative coverage. It was always... A lot of you know, negative. Was, Most of the channels are the left-leaning. For me, it was them trying to convince me that I should never vote for Trump. You know, it was always like, oh, he'll never win. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a racist. Uh, he's this, he's that. And it could be the ultimate form of reverse psychology. If that's kind of what you're talking about. You know, they're, 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 public, they're publicizing him and giving him the media coverage to get people to vote. Well, on the left, I'm sure you, do you did you follow the WikiLeaks drops, the Podesta emails? Oh, uh, yeah, I did. Give me oh. one second, because my stepdaughter's calling. Okay, go ahead. So I'll say it. I'll say it while he's uh, checking in with uh, his hey. phone call. Yeah, ready. But uh, what was I saying? Hey. Hillary Clinton's campaign instructed the media to elevate Donald Trump as a Pied Piper candidate. They wanted Donald Trump elevated, or Ben Carson, or Ted Cruz. That's specifically what the email says. So that's what the media did. I, I, of that, of that one. Oh, you're back? Okay, yeah. Yeah, here, yeah. I was just filling time until you got back. But uh, yeah, the media, the, there was an email in the Podesta leaks that uh, shows that Hillary wanted Donald Trump elevated as a Pied Piper candidate. Uh, hell, Donald Trump even talks about the fact that Bill Clinton is the one that talked him into running for president. So you think that it was, a, you think that was because she wanted a sure win over an easy opponent absolutely she felt like he she could beat him easily um she needed an easy opponent and she wanted a staged i think she want i my theory on donald trump's presidency and i see i don't i don't dislike the man because of his politics he's acting just like i would yeah. expect a republican to act you know um, it's weird that he was a Democrat his entire life and was even, I believe, in support of universal health care. And now he seems to have gone the polar opposite politically. But um, I dislike Donald Trump way before he became president. I just, I just see a narcissist when I look at him. I see somebody that's only interested in themselves and what they can do and, and, and gain for themselves. I don't see these great qualities that certain people are attributing to Trump as supporters, where they're 
he he speaks a good game. He is a good. He's very very good at speaking. He's very good at telling people what they want to hear and what they want to believe. I just don't see the follow through. Right. Well, the thing about it is, is that with with Trump supporters and and with his with his with his um, agenda that he was pushing with the America First, the Make America Great Again. It really, it really uh, touched people like me, blue collar workers that are tired of getting, um, you know, competing with a lot of illegal immigrants for jobs and job wages. You know, like I, I got into construction 20 years ago when I was 16 years old, and the wages haven't been anywhere down here in Florida. We still make the same money we made 20 years ago, but the cost of living has doubled. And every day that we wake up, we go to work, we see the mass amounts of illegal immigration. The effects that it has on our economy, our jobs, and our you know just our progress period. So a huge drawing point for you is his immigration stance. Yes, because like I said, and in, in, in even on top of that is like there's people who live in America today who don't have loved ones that have lost their lives due to the fact that an illegal immigrant was here, like myself, who lost lost a brother early in, in life. It's like he was 21 years old, you know. So, you know, I might be a little tilted on that, on that uh, opinion because I have that, but I've experienced that so I can relate. Yeah, absolutely. I, and I did not know that. That makes yeah. a little more sense, some of the things. <laughs> I feel bad now for some of the things I've chimed in that you posted. But, no, uh, it's all good. yeah, no, I completely understand having that viewpoint, especially experiencing that and being concerned about illegal immigration as a result. Especially yeah. when you factor in that it also affects your job. Exactly. But so all the stuff that Donald Trump was talking about, you know, was really aimed at the the middle lower class guys who are, you know, basically basically blue collar workers. You know, they're competing with this, you know, wave of illegal immigration down here in Florida. And I don't know if you live in Florida where you live at or if you've been in Florida, but I mean it's it's big. I mean, we have a whole cities of illegal immigrants that are stores are all, you know, Central American, South American stores. All the houses are all Central American, South American people. Um, basically, the whole what I want to say demographic of work, like such as on maintenance, stuff, the whole roofing is completely controlled by Central and South Americans. Now. Let me ask you this because it's on topic with what you're we're currently talking about, so I wanted to break in. Does it bother you? You live in Florida, so you're familiar with the fact that Trump uses illegal immigrants. He employs them. Yes, well, along with many others. I think they, they give them a temporary visa. I don't think he actually employs illegal immigrants, but he does. Well, do you, do you think he also does in his construction progress uh, projects? Well, I think the work is, you know, you're a builder, you hire other companies to do work as subcontractors. And those subcontractors that are doing the shell or they're doing the drywall or they're doing the roofing, they probably have large amounts of illegal immigrants working for them. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of it's poor follow-through. So they don't, the, the guy, the money guy, Donald Trump, he's not checking in with his contractors, his subcontractors to make sure that they're not hiring illegal immigrants. But at the same time, that laziness shows that he's not concerned with that in his personal life, but plays up in his in his public life, his polit political life that he is for support. Just like just like he, he claims he, he, he loves American workers and he loves American products, but all of his merchandise, all of it, and, and I'm sure it's the same still, I haven't verified it in a little while, but it's all made in China. Yeah. Or Mexico. Well, that, on that point right there, that uh, I'm going to say that, in my opinion, you have you have Donald Trump, who was a businessman before he even ran for president. And I used to work with a company that would import stuff from China because it's just a good business choice. Because American labor is a lot more expensive than Chinese labor. It's actually cheaper to have it shipped over in a container and pay that freight. And to run a company here. Well, that's I know it's cheaper, but no, what I'm saying is, like, 
for example, Bernie's merchandise is all made in America by unions. Yeah. If you care about it, like you would send a, wouldn't it send more of a message if inside your Make America Great Again had it said Made in America? <laughs> so it says Made in China? Yeah. If you look at the uh, label inside, I'm, if it doesn't, it should. It's, it is made in China. I I think I think the well let's talk about that hat for a second. I think yeah. that hat is meant to be incendiary. It's either at least been made to be, and you disagreed with me on that. Yeah, deeply. We uh, we had so many arguments about it. I had a poll on my Facebook page, and eighty six percent of people agreed that it was not offensive. But I think it's because they were taking the question too far. I'm I'm I mean I should have said incendiary. It it it, it yeah. triggers people. No matter what, it triggers people, and I think that's one of the only reasons to wear it because it's not really even an attractive hat. You Wait, ever, no, let me ask you this: Is does it trigger? Now, do you think that hat would trigger people without the media propaganda that's been tied to that hat? No. Without the media that has pushed this uh, propaganda, racist. Every time you turn the TV on, it's Donald Trump's a racist. Donald Trump's a racist. You know, they got the lawyer on it. They got the lawyer, the first thing he says when he comes out to, uh, you know, Congress or whatever he was on the, the House, um, you know, Donald Trump is a racist. That's the first thing he said. And for me, it's just more of the, the mind control, more of the trying to initiate emotion to get a reaction that's beneficial to the establishment. It's 100% prop. I agree. It's 100% propaganda. The media is our biggest enemy. And it, it, it's getting in people, it's giving them literally TDS, Trump derangement syndrome. It's a real thing. Yeah. Where you just, you're triggered by anything Trump. You don't even want to hear good news when it's Trump. Right. So. You know, I told, earlier I was talking about when I heard what the uh, subject of tonight's show was, that speech that J.F. Kennedy did before he died. And he mentions secret societies. And the second thing he mentions is the media. Yeah, I know that would have been perfect, but I, I wanted to get to the interview. I didn't want to waste too much time. I didn't know how busy you were or how much time you had for the interview. So I, yeah. but that, that, cause that's like a 12 minute speech. If you play the media part. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah. So, but I, I have made a video already with that speech in it about the media and, and, uh, on my YouTube channel for anybody watching, go check that out on me and things and stuff. I'd appreciate that. But, uh, yeah, so let me ask you real quick, just want to slide it in there for anybody watching, yeah. since this is a conspiracy theory show, and I know you're kind of a conspiracy guy. I've seen you agree with me, at least on certain things like 9-11. Absolutely. And Man Mandalay Bay being an inside, like, operation, some kind oh, of... Crazy. Oh, crazy. at least not the truth is what I'm saying, the mainstream story. You're one of those yeah. that agree with those kind of things. So do you follow Q? I don't follow Q personally. I, I, I don't have the time. I'm, I'm pretty busy. But um, a lot of the people that I have on Facebook are, you know, they, they'll send me links and they'll drop me this or drop me that, you know, about the Q stuff. I'm not a, I'm not a follower myself. I don't actually go on to the Q page and see, and see um, what he's posting. I did, however, like I went on to a uh, Q, Q, Q dot maps a few times and they have a bunch of stuff on there. But besides that... I don't actually follow Q that much. I think that's one of the ones that was recommended to me. Um, yeah, you can go in there and they have it all archived. That way you can look at yeah. it all. And, uh, and you know, the, the interesting about that Q, that Q situation is that when you went on the Q maps, it would, it would give you this list of executives and CEOs that since Trump has actually um, took house in, in the White House, that all these CEOs and all these people of high rankings and all these, you know, million and billionaire companies are, are stepping down for some reason. And I think what they're saying is that that's because of the pedophilia rings that are being exposed. Because of the, the, the pedophilia rings that are being exposed are, are, you know, busting these people and actually, you know, exposing them and forcing them to actually step down from their positions of power. But that's, that's at least what they're trying to say. You know, that's what they're trying to, you know, 
Get yeah, across. I said this. I, I I just recently had last week a QAnon a follower on. I don't know if you listened to that episode or not, but uh, I did. yeah. Well, um, I asked him the same question. I forgot where I was going now. Where was I going? We were talking about QAnon. Hmm. I was talking about the pedophilia. Yes, the pedophilia I, I I now I remember. Um, Trump does have the highest by far when you look at a graph uh, of his human trafficking and and uh, child pedophilia arrest it's like ridiculously high compared to every other president that they show on the graph before him yeah. to, to the point where it shows there was no focus on it at all so I, I go ahead no, I'm saying basically you're right. Exactly what you're saying. You know, um, Obama, you know, didn't have any, any, and he didn't care at all about the pedophilia rings. As a matter of fact, under Obama, he like handcuffed ICE so they couldn't even really do what their their jobs were to do. You know, and a lot of the a lot of the pedophilia rings or sex trafficking rings are being run through the border where they're bringing in girls and stuff. Come on in. No, you're right. They are. Um, now, on that topic, I've noticed that you also support the wall. Yes. And you believe, do you believe that the wall would stop a lot of that human trafficking and drug trafficking? Well, here's the thing. You got to think of it. This is how I think of it. You can either walk across the border freely with no board, with nothing to stop you, with no kind of obstacle or you have to figure out a way to walk across the desert with a ladder or a shovel and dig under the wall or climb over the wall so i don't I, I mean there's ways around the wall over it or under it but i think that it would definitely help but what i mean is like um the big cartels they have tunnels massive tunnels that you can drive trucks through well basically i mean I mean, we're talking about the big cartels. The big cartels are already in bed with most of the people that we're talking about right now. You know, the people who are in, in, in our government, you know, look at what Obama did with um, Fast and Furious. Do you think that's where the opposition to the wall comes from? Absolutely. Because, you know, a lot of people think that the current power, um, at least it did lie in the democratic establishment. They lost control of the executive branch. That wasn't supposed to happen, I don't think. I almost touched on this earlier, but my theory on the Trump presidency is that he never expected to win, never wanted to win. Um, when Cohen said in his testimony that Trump said this was gonna be the best infomercial in history, I believed every word of that sentence. I think that's the way he looked at it, it was gonna be great publicity for him, maybe even write a few books. Do a couple tours. <laughs> Seriously. I think I think one of the most shocked people on election night was Donald Trump. It, just, it didn't go. The media was shocked as well. But I think. That's what I was going to say. They, they were pretty shocked themselves. I think Melania was pissed. <laughs> I don't think she wanted it at all. She's like, I don't want to live at the White House. I don't want any part of this. You know. You know, like I said, I don't, I don't shoot people's theories down because I have my own, and, and you know, I think that the truth always comes out in the wash. You know, and I don't say that's not possible. Yeah, true. But for personally, I don't think that. But I, I could definitely see how you would think that. Yeah, yeah. Just based on his life, I'm, I'm saying, he may prove me wrong, and I want him to. He's the president of the United States. I don't want him to do poorly. Right. You know, that would be betting against myself. I, I hope that Bernie beats him in 2020. I hope Bernie's the nominee and Bernie beats him in 2020. But um, I don't want him to do a bad job because that affects me as well. Right. You know, so I want him to succeed. I just don't agree with a lot of what he's doing. Right. So speaking of Bernie, and I know you're a strong supporter of Bernie Sanders, do you really believe that – Giving the federal government control over our, 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 you know, our medical treatment is the answer. Because, like, we already tried this with Obama, and it, it turned out disastrously. You're not giving, see, under, under what Bernie's talking about, under a Medicare for All single-payer plan, 
you're not giving it to the government, you're giving it to the insurance company. The insurance company would deal directly with a single payer. It's just about who's paying for insurance. So the insurance is being funded through your tax dollars, but the insurance company is still dealing with the hospital, still dealing with the insurance company, just like with anybody on Medicare currently. It's just that the government is in charge of paying. The government will be charged with paying who? The insurance. Would be one insurance company for everybody. Yes. Right. So it's a monopoly. It would eliminate private insurance, yes. Right. So if but you work in private insurance, you could probably be against it. I don't believe in anything that gives the government more control or more power or more authority in anything. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of that. I don't want anything to do with anything that gives the government control or or closes the door of opportunity for other people. Well, and I... Even though I think insurance companies are the biggest farce ever, I just, uh, for giving the government all the power in that situation for me is kind of scary. Well, let me ask you this. Do you feel like the pharmaceutical industry and the healthcare industry has run rampant and needs to be reined in? Absolutely, and I I did think that um, Trump was touching on that quite a bit during his election. Well, I mean, what what do you think that those restrictions will actually be put in place? That insurance companies and the pharmaceutical industry will stop ripping, let's say, ripping off Americans, for example, on the on the price of pharmaceutical drugs. You know, we pay sometimes eight hundred percent what another country pays. For the same medicine, right? So, who, so in my in my response is, what's going to stop that with Bernie? What is, how is Bernie going to stop? Because it privatizes the, the it it eliminates private insurance companies, so there's no more extortion. Like, let me see, let me see if I can break it down this way. Like, you you usually seem concerned about the taxation part of it. You worry like the taxes will go up because you think that it would be passed down to the average worker. So I'm saying even if it was, his plan doesn't call for that, but let's say it did, just for hypothetical purposes. So let's say I'm, I'm Joey E. Smith and I pay $150 a week in federal taxes at, currently. So they roll out, I know that I'm not saying the number's right, I'm just using a number just to play with it. So that's what I currently pay. Now I pay, insurance at my job also so my insurance premium we'll just use mine for an example and I'll, I'll throw it to a round number is about 180 a week so if they doubled my federal income tax i would still have 30 extra dollars on my paycheck and they're not even talking about raising uh taxes for the average worker i have no pity on insurance companies because i feel like they've abused the privilege of of the power they've been given and they've used 100%. huge huge amounts of money to influence politicians to get that power and yep. either something needs to be done drastically to fix that and immediately or they need to be eliminated and that's right. why i'm so you know how I can go ahead you know how i can that you know it's all tied together because you know you have different insurance companies uh, say my daughter had insurance, she switched over to that. This insurance company that she uses only, you have to use, um, you can't use uh, the bootleg or the, the generic drug. You have that, the, you have to, the insurance company only pays for the, the name real brand. drug. You know what I mean? So Pfizer right. is paying the insurance company to only go through them and making it just for one, you know what I mean? So it's keeping the cost of insurance high, keeping the cost that you have to pay for medication high. Yeah, it's a wheel. It, it, it feeds each other. Just like in the, in the hospital, when you go into the hospital, if they give you an aspirin, they charge you $16 for it. When you can get 200 in a bottle for like four bucks. Right. You know, they inflate the cost of everything, but they've been allowed to do that. So I'm saying either they get reined in or we eliminate them. Right. And, and this I, and I eliminates agree. them. I, just, I would like to know, like, just like... You see the the blocking that Trump is getting. I believe that if if 
Bernie was actually going to do something good for the American people, that he would receive the same treatment. Absolutely, I do too. Because and that's why I... I think that he'll be able to do it because, you know, these people in, in, our, in, our, in our capital right now don't work for us. No, they don't. And he wouldn't be able to do it unless the people stayed united behind him. If the revolution didn't continue all the way through throughout his presidency, it needs to continue past that. We can never feel like it's okay for us to, to, to stop working, to go back to sleep, to stop paying attention, because it'll go back right the way it was immediately. The only thing that can fight it is us uniting and moving forward. That's what concerns me so much when like, for example, me and you, we agree on so much. It concerns me when we disagree so much politically because it scares me um, when I think of the future. Cause I'm like, we agree we need to fight about all these things. If we could just get behind one person, we could make sure that they had the power to do it. Well, the last person that had that kind of power was Martin Luther King and saw what happened to him. Yeah, or uh, Roosevelt. Franklin Roosevelt was that popular. He was yeah, a four-term president. King actually had people organizing and marching on Washington, which would be what would have to happen to change the system. Yeah. We would have all unite by the millions and march into Washington, D.C. together peacefully. Obviously, we can't be throwing rocks and bottles, but we'd have to do exactly what they did with the Civil Rights Movement. Exactly. That's what Bernie says in every speech. And that's one of the other reasons why I like Bernie. He's honest about it. He always says, we, whenever they start chanting, Bernie, 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 it's not me, it's us. You got to do this. Millions of you have to come together. It's the only way real change ever happens. He says it over and over again. That's one of the things I like about him. He doesn't try to tell you, hey, I'm going to get in there and I'm going to drain the swamp. He tries to tell you, you got to do it. And that's what I think a lot of Bernie supporters don't fully get, is that he's saying that it's our job. Right. He's a figurehead. The only reason I think he's running even at almost 80 years old is because I think he knows that he's the only one that can focus that energy again. If he thought Tulsi Gabbard or a younger progressive or Elizabeth Warren, who's a fake progressive, could pull in that energy, I think he would pass the torch. I think he's running because he's the only one who has the chance at beating Trump. And, and I, I think, think that's I think also true. I think he's falling back to Bernie because he had a big enough following back in 2016 and they realized that Hillary was a horrible candidate and she had way too much dirt on her. Do you think that the DNC is crawling back to him? It seems like they're ignoring him altogether as a candidate. All they want to talk about is Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. I don't know. Now, I want, Lori has been commenting feverishly. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about one of these commenters real quick. Uh, Lori has been commenting feverishly because Lori does not believe in politics at all. Now, and, and I wanted to ask you if you understand, first off, if you understand feeling that way. She believes that the political process is dead and should be completely ignored and killed off. 100%. 100% you agree with that? Because, see, I feel, like, I feel like if we mess up this uh, second chance at this Bernie thing, that, that I give up on politics myself. I don't feel like we're ever going to do it. If, if we, it, it would, this is our, I feel like he's such a populist and he's got such a strong following. That if we failed under that, what what are we really going to do in politics? You know, I used to have a, I had a friend who used to always tell me when we got into debates about this Republican and, and Democrat stuff, and it would always come back to the same same sentence he used to tell me. He would always tell me, "Left wing, right wing, it's the same bird." It is the two party system is is only an illusion of choice. It is. But for me, right today, I vote for the candidate that I think is going to be best. It's like the voting for the best slave master, basically. It is. And unfortunately, because I don't see enough people organizing and standing against our government, then I don't have any, any organization to join. Exactly. There, and and, and we're, we're trained and indoctrinated and, 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 and taught from when we're little to, 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 to depend on the system, to not rise up to stay obedient, not to mention we're drugged with fluoride. Yeah, and 
don't forget what happened to the, the Bundy Ranchers when they tried when they tried to do whatever they wanted to do. You know, that was that was crazy. Yeah. Not just them, when Waco. They ended up letting that guy go. Yeah. But Waco, think I'm, about I'm think about the that Ruby though. Ridge. Ruby Ridge is another really good example of people that were they attacked basically by our government for wanting just wanting to live in their own way. Like I don't agree with what David Koresh was doing, but those people there other than the children were all consenting adults and what he was doing was having multiple wives so and I, I think you got to prove you're hurting the children before you can raid the compound yeah exactly but you know because there's women at bill clinton the one that was president during the raid was a womanizer being a womanizer in a compound doesn't automatically give and just the fact that they have guns which they're allowed to have doesn't give you the right to raid their compound and burn it to the ground. And, and murder how many people? Yeah, yeah, you know, and you say it's to protect these children. Well, the children were in there. Right, and you know, that's the thing about the system that is so, it, it, it's always repeating itself, is that they are looking to impede on our constitutional rights under the guise of protecting us. Like, we're helping you by taking your guns away. We're helping you by giving you vaccination. We're helping you by, um, you know, controlling your food, controlling your water. But cigarettes are good for you, but Kratom isn't. Or, or you can do uh, Oxycontin, but heroin is terrible. We're going to lock you up forever if you tell. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. it, it's crazy. It's, like they were there. it's always about protecting us. It's always about national security. It's always about helping us. But that's, at the same time, they're really taking away from us. Absolutely. Everything's upside down. This is, in my opinion, this is the age of deceit. And everything's a lie. You got to find your own truth. You can't even get truth from what's supposed to be news and media and journalism. You can't trust it. You got to figure out if you can trust it or not. Because you don't even know if the opposition, some of it's controlled opposition. Like I believe Alex Jones is controlled opposition. Says that on QPUBS. Does it? I haven't gotten that deep into it. I didn't know that, but I think he is. I've always thought so. But you want to know what's really crazy about Alex Jones is that he's he's telling the truth on so many of the things that he's saying, but he's saying it so erratically and so um, strongly that he makes the truth look like nonsense. That's his so job. When I go to tell somebody something that Alex Jones says or maybe they heard what I said Alex Jones say mm -hmm. automatically they discredit it that's his job automatically they discredit it I feel like that's one of the one of the, one of the biggest purposes for a site like Infowars as a disinformation site and, and the Illuminati I'm not sure how familiar you are with their writings but they believe that they have to put your plan in plain sight and then the public silence is your consent so they tell you everything. They tell you through they art you and movies. movies. They tell you throughout the show. Mm -hmm. they, they lay it all out in front of you. Other labels. Yep. They lay it out in front of you. They tell you, you know everything. It's If you look at the movies, like, you know, Enemy of the State, for example, was how long before Edward Snowden? And that was all about government surveillance through your cell phones. Yep. That was in 99, 98. That, that movie came out cell phones were babies back then so how'd they know that the have nsa you, was going to have, have that the, have you seen the uh, the um back to the future um things where they tie together 9 11 with back to the future and all that mm -hmm. the, 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 the two tree mall or twin trees mall becomes the single tree yeah. mall the clocks at 9 11. there's a lot of but you know they use 9 11 a lot there's a lot of predictive programming with 9-11. We could get into that too. So like the Simpsons have done it. You could go back Sesame Street, all kinds of it's nine. The numbers 9 and 11 have been put together in your face a lot. If you really look at yeah. it, that's fascinating to look into. Look that up. But the numerology of the Illuminati is a fascinating thing. Like I touched on this earlier. I never got into it much, though, because I guess because I was so terrible at math. <laughs> I failed algebra twice in high school. <laughs> And I've never used it in my real life. <laughs> so I want my dad and my teachers to know that it didn't hurt me. 
to not learn algebra. I've never had to use letters to do math, and I've been able to do all basic math on my calculator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's right in my pocket. It, well, you know, and, and Elon Musk talks about that. What do you think about AI and, how, and the fact that we're turning into cyborgs? And how dependent we are on these things. Taking back to the movie things that they're telling us about, like how about iRobot and, and uh, Terminator Two? Mm -hmm. Like they're telling us about this, and it's 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 going there. Like all the stuff you see in the movies is actually really happening. You know, people believe Skynet's already in place. That something like Skynet is already in place, and Elon Musk seems terrified of it. And he's in the type of circle where he would be in the know. So it worries me when somebody that's, you know, considered to be one of the smartest people alive currently, and he's in the rocket industry with SpaceX, he's in the military industry with, I'm sure the rocket industry is tied in the military industrial complex. So he's tied in. If he's terrified, yeah. I'm terrified. Well, think about it. A computer that thinks for itself in an age where everything is run by a computer. Yeah. And we would seem to be something that needs to be eliminated because just of our destructive nature. If you looked at human history, you would immediately see us as parasites. If you were an unthinking, un, you know, unfeeling computer, you would look at humans as the worst thing on the planet. Cancer. Yeah, we're, we're terrible and we're killing the planet. So of course they would see us as something that needs to be eliminated. It, we were, we're killing our own home. We're at least allowing it to be done. Ourselves, they need to protect us from ourselves, just like our government is trying to supposedly do now. But to try to wrap this up in a little bow. So you believe that? Uh, I, I will agree with you that Trump rocked the establishment. The establishment is the media, and you're right that pretty much both sides or, or most of the media was completely against Trump even though they gave him significantly more coverage than anyone else, including Hillary Clinton. On the left-leaning channels, Trump got more than Hillary. So, and there's no such thing as bad publicity, but I agree with you that he rocked the establishment and they, they did not want him to be president. And I don't think the Republican side wanted him to be, be president. The Republican establishment That's didn't. Why I wanted him to be president. Right, I, I, I agree with all of that. I think he rocked the establishment and got through. Um, We'll see in 2020 if they don't rig the election to make sure it don't happen again. And I just hope they'll let Bernie Sanders be the nominee because it's on us at this point and we need to understand that. If we don't, he won't be the nominee. It's important for us to understand that we have to do that. We have to show out in millions and show out in numbers and show out in mass or they will rig it again. Why wouldn't they? I feel... I think that's what they're waiting to announce Biden for anyway. When Trump came into the office, um, he started to really investigate and, and, and put a crew together to actually look into uh, voter election fraud. Did he? Had they done anything? Yeah. Or what, what, did, was he concerned at all about the Diebold voting machines and how easily hackable they are? Well, what about the machines that are actually owned by Soros or, the, or manufactured by a Soros company? Mm-hmm. No, oh, there's tons wrong with it. it. Our whole election system is is really fraudulent. The f wanting to participate in it all, Lori's not wrong. I notice she's still been talking about, you know, not believing in politics at all. I understand. I understand it. The reason why I can't go down that road, though, is it has power over me. I have to participate in it and try to try to use whatever voice I have or whatever little power I have to push for things that I think are good and push for push in a direction that I think is a good direction to go into. Otherwise, what are we doing? You got to care about the outside world and what's going on. But I don't know. I, 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 I just I think my my reasons for not liking Trump are all personal. It has nothing to do with his politics. And I think that's where it lies. I think it should be more, okay, what is he doing as a president for the country? I don't care if I like him or not. What is he doing for the for the country as a whole is what's important to me. 
exactly so and that's that's what's important to me too it's just that when i see what he's pushing for i i don't i guess i'm not agreeing with it as much or i'm not seeing that you like the intent behind it you like the intent behind the wall for example um i don't think he'll get it done it's kind of like with me that would be what you think how you think about universal health care that's probably how i think of trump's wall that like, okay, maybe it would stop some stuff. It'd be nice. It's at least a gesture to show that we're trying to secure our border. But is it realistic and practical? And will he actually get it? And can you even do it? If you ever, you've seen the drone footage where they fly the whole map of where the wall is supposed to be. There's some pretty rugged terrain. I don't know. Brian Joseph said we need to create a new society and stop submitting to unlawful authorities and recognize ourselves, our self-governing Article 9 unalienable right. And I agree with that. You were talking to, well, let's close out with uh, something since we're trying to find a way to unite. Let's close out with something you were telling me about that I looked into briefly, but you can probably go into better than I can. The... Oh, my, remind me what I'm talking about. You just sent it to me, the, about the states. The Convention of the States. The Convention of the States. Um, yes, that's like where, where like, uh, 35 states would have to get together to call a convention. And um, I think they would need 39 states to actually come together and actually change uh, something indefinitely. Um, it's like, I'm not really, I've just been flirting with it because of all the division that we've been seeing i'm like well what can we get behind and it sounds something like we can both get behind because what it is what they're trying to do is they're trying to put term limits on the senators and, and the you know all that the seats that people have sat in for you know lifetimes and make right. millions and millions and millions of dollars on the side see that was so something ted sponsor, cruz came out power over the people right there's something Ted Cruz came out in support of, and I support that too. Sometimes you dis sometimes you agree with people you disagree with, and that's okay. You know what I mean? Everybody like liberals act like, oh, you can't support that because Ted Cruz. Why? It makes no sense. I just think we need to be able to, and it scares me that we're not capable of doing it. That we broke it up into teams, where yeah. you're Team Trump and I'm Team Bernie, and we feel like if you say something bad about our team, we have to be defensive and closed off and not listen to it. And that's just really dangerous way to be. So that, that, that makes unity almost impossible. That's you know? why I think the only answer would be for us to uh, ditch our candidates and, and go completely another direction. Not a Republican, not a Democrat, not a, not a politician. So through this convention of the states, you can overthrow the federal government? I, I'm not really 100% sure, but I think it's a really good thing for us to look into. I know that if 35 states come together, they can call for it. And if 39 states get together, and those 39 states are actually able to override the federal government. From my That's interesting. Be, be, I'm going to look into it deeper because that is fascinating. Um, and I, like I said, I feel like if, I feel like this is ours to mess up and I think I'm, I'm a little, you know, people, a lot of people are angry with Bernie because of how he reacted to what happened in 2016. You know, they feel like he should have came out against the election fraud. He should have thrown a fit. He should have, uh, went independent and ran third party. I can see the reasonings why he didn't do that. And it makes sense to me especially looking at what he's done in the meantime and how he's been running for president basically for free for two years as the Democrat outreach chair. So a lot of what he's done, I can see the sense in it, but a lot of people won't look at it because they're so mad at him about the, his reaction to the 2016 primary that he supported the nominee like he said he would. To me, that shows integrity. To others, it showed betrayal. Um, to me, it showed... I, for me, I just thought... That he that he was, uh, I don't know. I felt like he was getting paid for his for his um, you know, he was campaigning with her. He wasn't. He, he wasn't like he, he had thirty five rallies for her. He, he actually joined in on the campaign with Hillary. You know, Absolutely. 
I was I was this close to being a Bernie supporter until then. Well, he signed a document saying he would, and he signed another one this time. When you run as a Democrat or when you run as a Republican, you sign an agreement that you'll do certain things, and one of those is support the nominee, including campaign for them. Which oh, I think I didn't know the campaign part was included. I think the reason he campaigned so hard for her is because he didn't want people to say to be able to view him as a spoiler. I think he was so concerned that he would throw the election off for Trump that that's why he campaigned so hard. He had 35 rallies for her. He had more rallies for her than she had for herself. In those in those last in that last stretch, she was hardly campaigning. He was out there beating the drums for her. I think if, if Bernie's gonna win, I think he's gonna have to you know, he's gonna have to he's gonna have to reach out to the American people, not just um the illegal immigrant. Because right now he has like a campaign manager that's not even legal herself. I've seen that. Is that true? Have you looked into that know. and verified it? I've seen that shared around, but like a lot of times you don't want to trust things you see on memes. And a lot of times you can't trust yeah. a lot of news you see. So I wanted to verify it and I haven't gotten around to it. And that's laziness on my part. But have I. yeah, I, I'm going to check that out because I would have issue with that if it's true. I just can't imagine it being true. That's sloppy. You know, that just sounds sloppy to me. If you're putting together a team, I can see maybe on a temporary visa. Isn't that legal yeah. though? Wouldn't that be legal? So I'd have to look into it because I don't know if the truth's being stretched or if it's an outright lie or if it's true. But like I said, um, I can disagree with Bernie. And if it was true, that would be something I would disagree with as well. I just have to look at it and see right. if it is. But like I said, man, I, I think I think we need to get behind something that's not Trump, that's not Bernie, that's not Republican, that's not Democrat, that's not establishment, that's people, that's, that's the American people getting power back to the people, that's the Constitution being translated and understood as it was written, not as it's interpreted and, and configured into the two, year 2020, you know what I mean? Right. I agree with that completely. And I think you're right that it's probably not going to take place in this culture of personalities and this divisive political landscape you're probably never going to achieve that in that area we need to be able to unite outside and around that like you're saying to to do things for the greater good of society as a people is that what you're saying yeah definitely i, I think we need to unite as a people and stop standing behind politicians well i completely agree with that and that's that, that to me i think is a great sign that two people that disagree politically can agree that we need to unite and that politics is actually used against us as a divider and that we need to sometimes look past it at the bigger picture. Yeah, because you, you get to feeling like your your team's being attacked and then you get triggered and you're not even listening. So sometimes your team is wrong. Sean, let me, let me tell you. Let me tell you something. I, I got family that have actually unfollowed me and unfriended me on Facebook. Me too. Because I am a Trump supporter. If that doesn't tell you how deep the brainwashing or the mind manipulation can go, I mean, that's scary that, 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 that politics can actually separate families or family members from one another. That's how deep the control of the, of the, of the media can go. It the, is. Politics. It's crazy. They believe so passionately, and you disagree. You're disagreeing with a core belief that they hold that dearly. That your own brother, for my in my example, your own brother and your own best friend would be like turn their back on you politic for political reasons. It's crazy. I mean, like I said, own blood, blood ties. Like the, the the media brainwashing is stronger than than a family tie, and that's scary. That's right. Yeah, the media, and I say it all the time, I mention it probably once per show, the media is our greatest enemy. It is the biggest thing that we, one of the biggest things we need to take down. And it's, it's, it's because they sway the opinion of the average person so much and the feelings, and they have such a grip over what people believe. Well, they use the, they use the most sensitive subjects like racism, uh, uh, 
sexism, uh, Islamophobia, you know, like things that spark people's emotions down to the core. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, they know what they're doing. They've been doing it ever since what the 50s the cia first infiltrated the media in 1956 with operation mobbird and they incorporated i'm sure all the all the all the uh research they got from mk ultra on how to manipulate people and manipulate the human mind they use all those tricks against us did you or were you aware of the propaganda act that obama uh was able to do away with which allowed the Yes, propaganda is legal now. Propaganda yes, propaganda was made legal by Obama. It's legal for the media to use propaganda against you. That is crazy. That's crazy. And that was, I think that was only because of what was going on in the country where so many American people were getting behind this uh, renegade or rogue candidate. Well, and it was also done because the deep state uses propaganda as well. Uh, the ISIS videos, a lot of the ISIS videos were proven to actually be made by the CIA. And yeah. those were shown, no, really. And those were shown on the news as real. You know, and they were staged videos made in front of a green screen and they, sh they were able to prove that they were done in CIA studios. So, Holy crap. And, and they paid to have that stuff put on the news as real news. So. Propaganda is used in from both sides, um, but definitely by the establishment, the uh, establishment powers that be to divide and conquer and 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 get us upset. It's crazy how how upset some people get just by that hat, you know. Which is why I was so surprised that our poll went so sideways. Dude, I, I, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you the truth, man. When you made that poll, bro, I I shared it. To like all my freaking Trump supporter pages. I know you did. I saw it when I saw all the people were tagged. Yeah, I know you did. And but but what I'm saying is, like I said before, I think people were ignoring the real question: Is the hat a hate symbol? Does it trigger people? It does. And yes, it's because of the media programming, but that is in place. It happened. So people are just violently triggered by that hat. Or really, they're finally triggered by the media. No, I know. I agree. I agree with you. The media has made Trump a boogeyman. They don't know what else to do. They've come up with this bullshit Russia story, and they make Trump a boogeyman. That's all they do wall to wall, except on Fox, where they talk about, hey, Trump might be right about this. <laughs> yeah. But thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I think we beat this into the ground. We need to unite. Absolutely, man. It was a pleasure and an honor, man. Thank you. And thank you for doing the show. Uh, that was Clinton Gordon. And uh, let me figure out how to get out of here so I can let him get on with his life. I kept him for a long time. But I'm trying to... Here, let me see. Oh, okay. I got it. I'm so computer inept. But I hope you guys had a good time with that interview. Um we went a little sideways like i kept trying to pay attention to your comments i'm going to go through them now i'm pulling it back up on my phone i was trying to pay attention to them during the interview but it gets a little distracting you know and it sidetracked me a couple of times threw me off so i didn't want to i tried not to do it very much but let me look back through now and see what you guys have been saying ryan said edward snowden is a traitor see more he worked for the CIA. All is not as it seems. I'll have to look into that. That's interesting. I've never heard that before, so I will look into it. Um, Ram says propaganda brainwashes the mind. Why can't I go back and look at earlier comments? Um, Nor says he removed the Walter Act and allowed Muslim Brotherhood to control the government. The Walter Act, I believe, the Walter Act part, I know, I believe that's the name of the act that he did remove. But the Muslim Brotherhood part, I would also have to look into. And I will. I always need topics for future shows. Um, anything you want to suggest like that, that, I will go through and research all of this stuff. So 
I can't look at your older comments. That's bugging me. But if you're still here, I'm uh, I'm ready to keep going. I I can get into my little treat. I'm gonna I have it written down on my notes here. My theory that hit me today about what if, you know, because I don't buy into the whole bullshit about Bernie being a sheepdog, but I do understand the establishment's power. Now, Bernie is now the front runner. So we're in great shape. Psychologically, you you think Bernie's winning, right? What if, what if, now stay with me, the establishment powers that be are allowing Bernie to be 56 points ahead of Kamala Harris in every poll, um, allowing this to happen, only to pull the rug out from under us again to Charlie Brown us and to break our spirit. Just like I said during the conversation with Clinton, how I would probably be done with politics if we screw up this revolution. That that's exactly what I'm saying right here. That what if it that got me to thinking, what if this is just to break my spirits? What if this is just to dangle a carrot in front of me and just pull it away like before? And then under worse circumstances where it's clear as day it was rigged, like the theory kept snowballing in my head. It even got to the point where I was thinking, what if Joe Biden's waiting to announce his candidacy till they can figure out how to rig these friggin' polls to make it look like he beat Bernie? Graham says Trump 2020. Um, if he runs, a lot of times, a lot of times I, I think maybe he won't even run for a second term. I don't think his family wants him to. Um, I'm wrong a lot. But I think Mel Melania, for example, is very unhappy with being first lady. I don't think she wants any part of it. Um, it's got to put a big strain on their marriage. Not that I felt like their marriage was very close to begin with. You know, you can kind of look at the way, again, this shows to Trump's character, the way he treats her. You know, like when he first got to the White House, the way he was just walked off his own. He left her to be and didn't worry about her at all. You know, it's just or he snapped at her at his inauguration. It's just things like that. Little things. His personality. It turns me off. You know, um, I'm open to looking at his policies. I just haven't seen a lot there that has convinced me that. I'll give you that he's anti-establishment to the point where they didn't want him to win. I think I'm getting sidetracked again. We're talking too much politics. This is supposed to be a conspiracy theory show. Ryan says, truly, the whole world is an illusion. The light, the dark, the duality. It is divide and conquer in spiritual realms. Ken Cousins says, the light when you die is simply a reprocessing plant. Why do you think that we come into this world without any memory? What do you think about the matrix? The, the theory that we're in a computer simulation. What do you think about that? I mentioned Elon Musk earlier. He thinks it's a one in a billion chance that we're not in a computer simulation. I, for one, I'm open to it. Like I say, I'm open to everything. I'm open to having my beliefs changed, but I would rather believe that we don't live in a computer simulation. Ryan says, uh, oh, true story, you do. Believe that we live in a matrix and a hologram? That's interesting. It's fascinating. If you think about it, and because you have to think that, oh, that means I'm basically a sim in, in someone's creation. Not real at all. That's scary to me. I, I actually don't want it to be true. That's why numbers like that scare me so much when someone that's supposed to be a lot smarter than me says that there's a one in a billion chance that we're not living in a simulation. It tweaks my ears a little bit. I'm like, well, <laughs> holy shit, maybe I need to look into this. Hey, Nick's here. Are you still here, Nick? Nick was our guest last week. I'm glad to see you back. Ryan says, you're the creator. You're the, so you are creating your own world. Well, how is that? How does that work? So then when there's billions 
of these simulations running at the same time. But then, so all the people that are in my, let's say this, all the people that are in my simulation, the people that are in my life, are they real? So in the, in the simulation theory, is my wife real? Are my kids real? Or are they just made up in my imagination? And they're not real in someone else's simulation. So if I, my best friend, for example, in his simulation, my kids don't exist, maybe. Ryan says, everything around us came from ignorance. That's why it exists. That's why it sucks so bad. You're the creator experiencing itself. That's fascinating. That really is. I'm very interested in that. I'm going to look into it more. So I would like to cover it a little deeper. I did uh, a brief uh, conspiracy theories and chill on the matrix theory. And I used someone else's video for that one. But I would like to do my own. I would like to research it deeply and really get into it. Because it is fascinating. I just don't want to believe it. That's one of the things that scares me off sometimes. I'll, I'll, I'll be reluctant to go down a certain rabbit hole because I don't want it to be true. You know? Or I'm allowing myself to just believe it can't be true, which is why I forced myself to look at Q, uh, QAnon, because I, I was just not looking at it because I was thinking it was so ridiculous. It couldn't be true, you know, but I don't want to be that way. You can't learn anything that way. And what if it is real? So I needed to look at it from an impartial viewpoint. And if Nick's still here, the conversation with Nick helped me to do that. So there's a lot to go through. I'm still doing it, but I'm at least in a, in a different frame of mind where I'm, I'm looking at it through a clearer lens. And the, the part that bothers me, and it's really the only part that bothers me, I love conspiracies, so it's all great. And going through information and all the researching, everything about it is great. The only part that bothers me is Trump being a hero. That's the only part that bothers me. If I could believe that Trump is a hero, I could probably be down with Q. I just don't feel like Trump has any of these good qualities that people are attributing to him. I do believe that he rocked the establishment, that that wasn't supposed to happen, that Trump wasn't supposed to become president. Um, so in that way, he is anti-establishment, but I just don't buy that he's such a great leader. I don't see the qualities in him, that's all. But I'm hoping I'm wrong. Like I said before, he's the president of the United States. I don't want him to fail. But let me thank you guys for coming. We've been going for a while. We, we, we usually shoot for a goal of an hour. It's been an hour and 20 minutes, and I think it's been a pretty tight show. I had a great time. Thank you to our guest, Clinton Gordon. I hope you enjoyed that interview. Um, I want to do more interviews. I don't, it's going to be something that I'm going to do more of in the future. So I hope you like that. Uh, come back next week and see us again. We do this every Friday night at 7 p.m. Central. So this has been Conspiracy Theories and Chill. And let me tell you this, just in case, it's not always so political. A lot of times we stay away from political. But political needs to be talked about. You, gotta, you can't have taboo issues. And politics has power over us. You know, I know people like Lori think we should just stop paying any attention to it at all. But to me, that's letting your kids run around with knives. It's, you know, giving the blind the keys to the car. Give any analogy you want. It's just, that's dangerous. To take your eyes off the road like that. I, I don't agree that that's what you should do. Maybe you should push for people to rise up. I agree with that. Because that's where real change is going to happen. That's what Bernie's been saying all along. It's always been that it's got to be us. It's not him. Bernie's not going to save the day. Bernie can't save the day. Neither can Trump. So no one can do anything for you except you. You are the ones you've been waiting for. So until next week, I'm Sean. You're you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing if you did. And uh, we'll see you next week on a new Conspiracy Theories and Chill. This is the fun part of the show where I try to shut it off. It always takes me a really long time to do. Like I say, if I was a viewer of this show, this would be my favorite part.